What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back in the place to be teaching you everything you need to know about entry level IT. Oh, y'all like that. I got bars, huh? Anyway, so we got to talk about whether or not you should go to college to get into IT or do you can you just completely bypass college altogether? And the reason I'm asking this, I uh, want to talk about this is because of uh, my man, Paul Blunt, Paul Blunt out there in the comment section on my Technology G YouTube channel. Shout out to this brother right here. He says, I wanted to ask, do we need to go to college to learn IT or can we learn on our own? I plan on joining the military, but I kind of don't want to get an MOS in IT. Is it possible I will be able to take classes online and learn about IT and coding? Thanks in advance, and I subscribe to the website. Shout out to you for subscribing to the Technology G website so you can be all you can be out in these internet streets because, you know, we can't go outside and play due to the uh, thing that's going on outside these days. So let's talk about it, ladies and gentlemen. Do you need to go to college to get into IT? The short answer is no. No, you don't. You do not need to go to college to get into IT. Now, depending upon what you may want to do in IT, well, you might have to go to college. And so like, so you're like, well, what do you mean? What do you mean? What should I want to do? I just want to play with computers and, and break stuff and fix stuff. Well, check it out. There are all kinds of different lanes in IT, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you got everything from people who work at the help desk, people who do cybersecurity, uh, people who program up all these beautiful websites like YouTube that you're currently listening to me on right now. Uh, you got people that install security systems. Those are functions of IT. There's all kind of stuff out there. You need to kind of figure out exactly which path in IT you think you want to travel down, and then that will determine as to whether or not you think you want to be, uh, whether or not you think you need college to fulfill your dreams, right? So um, some of those examples that I just gave, what was what I, what I say? Oh, yeah, help desk, cybersecurity, and some other stuff I just said. You don't necessarily need a college degree for those things. And what do I mean with help desk? So help desk is essentially one of the entry-level jobs, one of the easiest ways to get into IT, as a matter of fact. Basically, you're literally working at a help desk, answering phones, creating user accounts, resetting passwords, plugging in network cables, running around doing a bunch of um, a bunch of what we call tier one stuff, lower level stuff. And don't think of it as a bad thing. Just think of it as this is the starting point to help you build your foundation as you rise and rise through your career in IT. So you can have an understanding of the base knowledge stuff that you need to have an understanding of you know, the higher you get. So you wouldn't necessarily need a college degree for that type of stuff. Now, if you want to become like a high school teacher who teaches IT, uh, a, a tech college professor who teaches IT, or a college professor who teaches IT, chances are you will need a degree that is related to IT, whether it's computer science, information technology, information assurance, or something along those lines, right? If you want to go work for like uh, in the private sector and start climbing the corporate ladder and you have you set your ambitions on, I want to be the CTO, the chief technology officer, or the CISO, the chief information security officer, or the CIO, the chief information officer, and you could think of those three positions as like the highest ranking uh, IT positions in a company that kind of deal with the uh, C board or the executive board, whatever they call it, where, you know, the CEO is up there hanging out, you know, making all the big decisions and things like that. More than likely, you will need a college degree of sorts, whether it's related to IT or MBA or something else that remains to be seen. But chances are you're going to need an IT degree for that. But if you are just getting started out, trying to figure out your life. No, you don't have to go to college. Now, I'm not discouraging college, but I'm just saying getting into IT without going the traditional four-year route of college, you don't have to go to college to do this. So let's get back to my man, Paul Blunt. He says he plans on joining the military, but he doesn't want to get an MOS in in IT. So MOS stands for Military Occupational Specialty. So basically what happens is 
when you guys go down to your recruiting station and you sign up to join one of the uh, how many branches are there now? We have the Army, the Navy, Air Force, Marines and, and the Space Force. So what are we up to like five and think the Coast Guard? So maybe that's six, but whatever. I joined the Army. So when you join the Army, <laughs> you go down there to join the Army, right? They're going to ask you to, uh, you know, take an ASFAB test. Uh, I can't remember what it stands for. Something vocational aptitude battery test, right? Or armed services vocational aptitude battery. It's a test to kind of measure your skills, your smarts, to kind of figure out what career field you might qualify for. All right. So you go down there, you take that based upon your score. They're going to be like, hey, these are the career fields we think you uh, you fall into. Then guess what? Assuming you assuming you meet all the criteria to join the military, they ship you off the basic training. You go out there, learn how to be an infantryman. And then after that, you go to this place called AIT, Advanced Individual Training. And then that is where you learn the job that you signed up to do, at least as far as the U.S. Army is concerned. Right. And so. That job is called your MOS. Now, this person says they want to go into IT, but they don't want to do it through the military. That's fine. You can totally learn IT on your own. But in my personal opinion, uh, if you want to learn IT and you plan on going into the military, my personal belief is why not go into the IT field of the military? And currently there are to my knowledge, based off of what I know, because I've been out the military for five years, there are two branches or two MOSs related to IT in the military. You have 25 Bravos, which which is what I was. And then like a year before I got out the military, they created a new branch called 25 Delta, which primarily deals with cybersecurity type of stuff. But in order to be a Delta, I believe you got to be a 25 Bravo first. I'm not sure, but whatever. But why not go into it in the military? And the reason I say this is because they're going to train you in this stuff. They're going to teach you all this stuff and they're going to pay for your certifications. So why not, why not learn on the U.S. government's dime instead of spending your own money to go out there and learn this stuff? I mean, you can learn stuff. You can learn extra, more advanced stuff that they're not going to teach you in AIT, you know, things that. Let's just say you decide, hey, I want to become, I want to get my CCNA or something like that. Well, you might have to learn that stuff on your own. But even if you do learn it on your own, there's a high chance that you can get the military to pay for your certification in that stuff. But at least starting out in IT, learning A+, plus, Net+, plus, Security+, plus, if you were to join the 25 Bravo MOS, they're going to teach you all this stuff for free and they're going to pay for your certifications. That's what they're going to do. And how do and you're like, how do you know? Because I was an AIT instructor for my last four and a half years in the army where I dealt with hundreds into the thousands of privates, as we call them, our new recruits that came through, learned the 25 Bravo MOS amongst me and probably like 50 or 60 other in cadre instructors I used to work with. And we used to teach this stuff every single day, like clockwork. We would take a brand new private who didn't know nothing about anything other than how to cut their smartphone on and log on and watch uh, YouTube videos. By the time they left our door to go down to their first duty station, you know, they would have at least A plus, net plus and maybe security plus. And let's just assume that they decided, you know what, I'm getting out the army the next day, assuming that that was a possibility. Right. They could probably go from zero to making 15 to 20 dollars an hour starting out and this is stuff that they learn on the army's dime you dig so as it relates to the military you want to go into the military and you want to be in it me personally paul i think you should join the it branch of the military of the u.s army assuming you want to go into the army of course and become a 25 bravo they're going to teach you all the basic stuff and they're going to pay you. And they're going to yell and scream at you by the drill sergeant. But hey, that's cool. That's cool. That's what you're there to you're there to become be all you can be in the army of one. But go out there and just join the 25 Bravo. Or you can go do it on your own. It's, a it's totally up to you. I'm just telling you based off of my personal experience, if I was going into the military and I knew they had a career field dedicated to information technology and I wanted to be in the army, guess what? I'm going to go into that career field. 
is I can learn information technology and I can go to the weapons range and shoot weapons and run three, four, five miles and potentially jump out of airplanes and all that great, wonderful stuff, you know, like I did back in the day. All right. So that's that as far as the military stuff is concerned. So let's get back to um, whether or not you actually need a college degree. And one of the ways that you guys can do this for those of you who are starting out in IT. So let, let me adjust my little my little screens here. All right. Let me let me get all fancy on y'all. Oh, look at that. Oh, so check this out. So one of the ways that you guys can kind of figure out as to whether or not a particular career field in IT is going to require a college degree. You can go to this website called Indeed. Indeed is a website where you uh, submit resumes to employers who are posting jobs on this website so that hopefully, you know, y'all link up, y'all y'all fall in love with each other and y'all get hired, right? So what you can do, you can go into the search bar here where it says what and just type in, uh, uh-oh, somebody's, somebody's blowing up my phone here. All right, just type in, um, let's type in information technology, right? And you pick a random city. I'm just going to leave New York City up there for now. And we're just going to hit find jobs. Now we're going to go over here and let's just look for entry level. So let's go with uh, entry level. And okay, so we have 557 results. Let's just look for the newest ones. So this was posted today. I highly doubt this is an entry level job, by the way, but whatever. So let's just see what this this IT systems administrator does. They're offering forty to seventy thousand. Oh, this might actually be an entry level because forty to seventy thousand in New York City is. I know it looks like a lot of money, but that's probably the equivalent of making thirty, forty thousand down south somewhere. But let's just see what they're let's just see what they're talking about on these uh on these internet streets. So IT systems admin up in New York City paying forty to seventy thousand a year. Let's just scroll on down to see what they're talking about, right? So experience, they're just requiring one year system administration experience, preferred. Oh, wow, they want you to speak Chinese. Okay. <laughs> you need to go out there and learn some Chinese, ladies, some Mandarin, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the required skills, they want you to know Wireshark, how to, how to deal with DNS servers, mail servers, Windows 10, and some other stuff, right? Now, do any of you see anything about a college degree up in here? No, you don't. No, you don't. So if you can put together a resume and you can also prove that you know how to manipulate, how to use Wireshark, mail server, configure DNS servers, uh, deal with issues pertaining to Windows 10, and you can speak Mandarin, you can get this job right here with no college, no college experience whatsoever. I'm surprised they didn't even list any IT certs, but I'm pretty sure whoever's going to be interviewing you is going to be looking for certain IT certs related to these required skill sets. Let's go find something else. We're just doing some random searches here. I don't know what's out here. Information technology support specialist as an intern. Oh, we don't want no intern job. We want a job paying some money. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's look at this guy here, a data administrator, $55 to $75 an hour. Oh, this is a, uh, okay. They don't mention anything about college degrees here either. Oh, yes, they do right here. So in this particular job, it says it's a bachelor, a bachelor's degree in engineering or a related scientific subject is preferred. So if you want to be a data system, data administrator, you know, you go through read what, what all they're talking about doing here. And then you get down to the qualifications or the requirements and they will let you know as to whether or not you, you will need a, a college degree to enter this certain career field. And so I'm showing this because this is probably the easiest way for you to kind of figure out if a certain career field in IT will require an entry level, uh, entry level, uh, will require a college degree or not. Or is it just going to be strictly based off certifications? Just go through whatever city that you live in or whatever city that you might want to live in. And just type in information technology or type in computers or something related to that. And then just look for entry level jobs and just start scrolling through the jobs and reading the requirements and the qualifications. And if you come across a bunch of data administrator jobs and you notice like, 
Let's just say you come across 10 jobs talking about data administrators. And out of the 10 jobs, seven of them at, require you to have a, a college degree. Well, chances are you're going to need a college degree to go into the data administrator career field within IT, right? Well, let's just say you come across 10 other jobs dealing with help desk, tier one, tier two type of stuff, right? And out of the 10, you come across seven that all they require you to have is an A plus, network plus, or security plus certification, or maybe one or two years experience, you know, whatever the case may be, but they mention nothing about a college degree. Well, that'll let you know right then and there to get an entry level tier one, maybe a tier two job. You don't need a college degree to get hired on. You're just going to need either the experience or the certifications or a combination of both. So that's kind of how this works, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to getting into IT for the first time. College degrees are not mandatory, but. They are really just based off of, you know, what it is, what actual job are you trying to or career field are you trying to get into? That is going to ultimately dictate whether or not you need a college degree or not. All right. So those are my thoughts as to whether or not you need a college degree. And these are also my thoughts as to whether or not uh, you need to as to whether or not the military going to the IT field in the military is the right thing for you as it directly relates to my man, Paul Blunt over here, but no, you don't need a college degree, but at the same time, research the particular career field in IT by going to Indeed or doing some random Google searches to determine if a college degree is a requirement or not for that particular career field. And then that will hopefully get you on your path so that you can go out there and be all you can be out on these mean IT streets, ladies and gentlemen. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm Tech G. Visit my website, Technology G, where I have uh, my IT fundamentals course posted up there. I will be working on my A+, Network+, Plus, and Security+, Plus courses, which will be going up on that website throughout the course of this year, along with other videos of me just running my mouth on random subjects talking about IT. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.